Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Qualities. Today's episode we are going to review a motherboard replacement on an Optiplex All-in-One 7410. Please like, subscribe, comment. We are posting videos daily on various different replacements. All right, uh, let's get started. Here is a diagram on how to remove the back stand pedestal if you have one. In this particular case, uh, we did not have one. This was on a wall mount. So uh, you're going to remove the back cover on this. And um, you'll get started. There's several different layers here that you'll have to remove in order to get down to the motherboard. So take note in how I do it. You're going to start removing screws from the bottom cover. You can see I'm kind of giving a little pry here to see if anything comes loose. I'm going to proceed to removing the screws around the perimeter of the system board shield here. And here we're lifting the system shield up and out of the way. Now we're working on removing the screws for the I.O. brackets. Now I'm working on prying up the bottom cover. Got a couple more screws to get the last I.O. bracket out of the way. With all the screws removed, we can now remove the I.O. bracket. Now the entire motherboard is exposed. And now we begin removing components off the motherboard. Remove the DIMM module. And we remove screws for the Wi-Fi card. Try and keep your antenna connectors intact on that Wi-Fi card. It'll save you some time later. If they don't become disconnected, you can just put it right back in place on the new motherboard. And remove the screw for the SSD hard drive. Remove that. Now we're removing in sequence the uh, screws that keep the heat sink assembly in place. Four screws around the CPU. And then uh, we're removing screws off of the fan, Th three screws for the fan. And you can see I missed one there. And the fan cable, uh, disconnect that from the motherboard. It's kind of anchored under that other cable. So we'll get back to that one in a minute. Now we're going to attempt to remove the heat sink and you can see that there's one last screw up on the right side of the heat sink up there. Remove that and then we can get the heat sink removed. I'm going to take a Kempad alcoholic wipe and clean off the thermal grease off of the heat sink. I'm just going to remove that fan out of the way. Now we're going to begin removing our connectors, various different connectors around the perimeter of the motherboard. Now there's lots of different kinds of connectors here. You want to be careful. Um, if you're not familiar with these connectors, take your time with it. Some of them are really easy. Uh, this one here has got a couple brackets on the side. This is your LCD uh, display cable connector. you got to squeeze the bracket on both sides while pulling it to the left. Now these, these connectors here, 
they've got a little wire bracket that folds up and you kind of use that to pull it to the left and disconnect. And there's one more on the right here. Same thing, fold this little bracket up. I use a, a small screwdriver tool that, uh, that I can easily grab that bracket and fold it up. When you're disconnecting these, I try not to pull on the wires. I use my screwdriver tool to kind of grab the edge and pry it up a little. I've seen wires come loose or disconnect from the connector itself. Once you get all the connections done, then you're going to go around the perimeter and remove all of your anchor screws. Most of the screws on these AIO models are universal. They're all the same size, uh, with exception to your Wi-Fi card screw and your SSD screw. And then these screws that I'm taking out right here for the Wi-Fi and SSD are also different. So keep take note that you put those back in the same place because you're going to need those to remount your SSD and your Wi-Fi card. Once all the screws are out, you can pry the motherboard up and out of place. Now what I'm going to do here is um, the way I'm demonstrating the removal of the processor is a little unorthodox here. I'm doing it for the sake of the video, but usually I'll have the new motherboard in the same orientation laying next to the project. So I'll make sure I'll just move it right over as it came out of the old motherboard. Uh, all, all processors have a little indicator. Um, you can see the big white arrow on the lower left side of the um, socket. Make sure that your processor has the arrow that aligns with that arrow. You can see I'm kind of pointing. There's a small arrow. Difficult to see in this video. I've seen technicians put these in backwards and it uh, can cause uh, serious damage to your motherboard and processor if you, if you do that. So. Now that we get the new processor in, we're going to uh, place the new motherboard back in place, carefully removing all of the cable connectors from around the perimeter. Uh, sometimes um, one or two is missed and you start throwing screws in and then realize you've got a cable pinched under there. So you want to make sure it seats properly, that all the holes are aligned. You'll feel it when it drops into place, that it feels like it's in place. Once I get it in place, I start uh, replacing all the screws. Um, anchor screws for your M.2 cards around the board. And those are different from all the other screws, so make sure you get them back in the right place. And then your universal screws around the perimeter of the motherboard go in. I'll take our alcoholic wipe and clean the thermal grease off of the processor. I like to do that after swapping it to the new motherboard. Uh, some of these alcoholic wipes really have a lot of um, fluid in them or, or alcohol, if you will. And I've seen techs clean these before they move it over. And it's so drippy wet, they don't wait for it to dry. And when they remove it from the socket, that alcohol will drip around to the bottom side. It kind of creates a mess. So I like to do that after we get it into the new system board. Once that's done, we're moving around the board, replacing all of our various different connections. Um, again, if you're not familiar with these, take your time. Once you learn how a lot of these connectors go back in, you know, it's a, it's a breeze. But until you familiarize yourself with some of these connectors, just take your time and make sure it gets done right so that you don't damage any connectors. You can see here with these kinds of connectors, I like to take that bracket, I, I get it lined up and then I use the bracket with my screwdriver and I pull to the left to kind of seat it firmly in place. Get your Wi-Fi card put back in place. Um, if your antenna is coming disconnected, you're going to want to carefully reconnect those. Um, sometimes those are difficult to reconnect. I've seen technicians damage those quite a bit and you end up having to get a new Wi-Fi card or antenna cables and it's just a big hassle. Don't need a lot of thermal grease here on the, on the processor. 
just a little dab in the middle and when you place the heat sink it's going to spread it out evenly across the processor. So we get the heat sink back in place. There's a sequence of numbers that you want to tighten these. They usually have numbers you want to look for. So here's one, two, and three would be up on the right side heat sink and then go back with four and five. That assures that uh, you're evenly distributing your paste across the processor. Get your CPU fan back in place. Reconnect it to the motherboard. Finish with your other connectors around the perimeter. We're going to put our three fan screws back in. Reinsert the SSD hard drive. Reinsert our memory DIMM module. Now we're ready to start putting our brackets. Here's our I.O. bracket. Put that back in place. Start reinserting screws in reverse order. Sometimes these brackets and the bottom cover and the shield are difficult to know what order they go in. I've tried to align it in this video so that you can see the best order to put it in. So we're getting our I.O. bracket in place with all the various screws. Now we put in our bottom cover. Put in the top I.O. bracket cover. And then I bring in the system board shield bottom edge there has to kind of anchor under that I.O. bracket cover. Just kind of put it in in that order and then uh, close it off with the rest of your screws around the perimeters and should be good to go. Appreciate you all watching this episode. Um, feel free to comment. Uh, please like the video if this was helpful and uh, at the end of this video you'll see tech qualities button on the bottom right. Uh, would love to have you subscribe. Uh, we're adding new videos every day. We try to make our videos intuitive and uh, for the purpose of helping uh, new technicians, usher them into the uh, field technician profession, if you will. We've got a number of people that are watching and that find these videos helpful. So we appreciate you all and for your time, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.